Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks and today we are going to take a look into the Gondo faction in the Legends of the Third Each mod for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06 but before we're gonna jump into the video I wanna have a face reveal guys, you will be able if you want to, to see me for a couple of seconds at the bottom right side of your screen and then I will need some time to set up my green screen and everything correctly and hopefully very very soon we will be able to stream with webcam exclusively because I believe seeing the person behind the voice behind the screen is always gonna create some sort of connection and hopefully you will not be disappointed guys once again that's gonna be a very small and short face reveal and very soon on my twitch channel twitch tv slash beyond standards you will also get the chance to see me in every single live stream follow me there if you haven't done it yet anyways face reveal then we're gonna jump right into the game okay Okay guys, so once again today we're gonna take a look into the Gondo faction. It's gonna be a 1v2 situation between us against two hard armies, random. On the map Tarbiat, I think that's a great map for a 2v1 situation because look at the layout. They have a chicken spot here against two hard armies. Let's get it started. And yeah, Gondo is a faction we already know from normal BFME 1. But trust me on that one, there are many many changes, I believe. But I have not seen them just yet. That's gonna be the first time I'm gonna take a look into that. Hopefully it's gonna be great, hopefully you're gonna enjoy your stay. And make sure also to leave a like on this video guys. Doesn't cost you anything but 5 seconds, but it's very very helpful. So we're gonna take a look into the Titter first. As you can see we have Gandalf as we used to, the same price 6000. He's gonna come out with rank 1 though, not rank 5 anymore. Boromir also with rank 1, he's a bit cheaper. Cost normally 1600 in the patch 1.06. We have Faramir, the captain of Gondor, the same price, but also rank 1 instead of rank 3. Then we have the King of the Dead, so the leader of the Army of the Dead, you know? And last but not least, we have also uh, the Eagle, I can't pronounce his name, Gwaiya, something like that. Flame me in the comment section down below if this pronouncement is wrong, I think it's wrong anyway. And we have, of course, last but not least, Peregrine Took, also known as Pippin. Throwstone, Cloak, and then he has also the Noldorian Dagger, which is a powerful melee attack, he needs to be level 6 for this one. And last but not least, Bonds of Friendship. The Bonds of Friendship cannot be broken by Darkness. Passively gain 25% more damage, armor and 200% more health. Passively, that's nice. Okay, so we have Soldiers. They have also no abilities, pretty much the same. Block formation is the same. The battalion size is the same. Everything looks pretty similar to, to that what we are used to from the normal 1.06 patch. And we will be using our Hobbit Peregrine Took. To go to the settlement and split our soldiers to um, soldiers. I can't even speak. It's been a long time, as you guys know. I was not making any YouTube videos for a really long time. And hopefully you didn't forget about me, guys. Oh, oh, wait a second. We should not forget about Peregrine Took. And now we can lead one of the soldiers to this lair. Get them to level 2. Okay, that's the plan. PowerPoint wise, we are able to pick up the heal. The Elven Wood. That's pretty similar to 1.06. Summon a beacon that's pretty unique. Uh, grants leadership, maximum two beacons at the same time. I don't know how much leadership you will get though. But we can take a look into that later on. If also the Palanty of the White reveals the entire map. That's crazy for one single power point only. And we have also the Summon Rangers. That's nice because normally... Um, wait a second. Need to pay attention. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I was not able to share experience with the Hobbit, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, because normally the summoning um, ranges wasn't a thing. You are only able to summon the Alvin warriors. And you know what I like also about this mod quite a lot? That you, also evil factions are able to summon stuff. Which is not existing normally in uh, 1.06. Only good factions are able to summon the Rohirrim, the Elves, the Eagles, and the Army of the Dead of course. And the Ants. But evil factions can only summon one thing and that's the Balrog himself. No little small reinforcement summons. Which could be... Quite nice, like in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King. Doesn't exist in BFME 1 though, Let's go. but that's fine. Come on, okay, here. so what's the plan? Let's no, lead to here. opponent already. We have Faramir. Once again, he's going to get on the field with rank 1. He has also one in Hero with level 1. And in 1.06 normally he comes with level um, uh, 3. Out, so man. getting him to level 5 or something like that is of course way, way Stay easier. Quiet. Wait a second, wait a second. I don't know if we can grab the settlement. I think we can. We should just cancel it to get the money back. We are against a Rohan. And against a Rohan also here. I think that's the same player. Maybe it's double Rohan. I'm not sure. 
If it's double Rohan, we already know what's gonna happen, right? They're gonna spam, uh, you know, spam ends on us all the time. It's gonna be a nightmare. Barami is great against Rohirrim, so we should be able to deal with them, no big deal. And uh, we're gonna take a look into every single hero, because I believe, unit-wise, there are not many differences. You can also throw a rock of it. Uh, Powerpoint-wise, we can start with the heal, I guess. Yeah, what is that? Gandalf to right? That's also very important. Rohan allies summon. Men, the towers. Station arches in the towers of veteran farms and blacksmiths. That's nice. Passively. It's gonna make the farms... Uh, oh, look at this. What's going on? Shenanigans. Paramiya needs to be careful, but we have heal in the worst case scenario. I'm fine. There is a hero. Who's this? Gambling. Gambling, stop, stop gambling. You will get one-shotted now, my friend. What is this? There, there is a guy reaching. Bam. There is another gambling coming. Is this also gambling? I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's also gambling. Double gambling against one single Faramir. And that's the time for Faramir, the captain of Kondo, finally to show his quality, guys. You think you got me? I got healed, bro. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna build a tower here. And uh, also, post sun gate, close the gate. Hope for the best. You know how it is. We lost every single soldier, unfortunately, including the Hobbit, but it's fine. Farami is very strong, actually. He's level 8 now. With level 9, he is the leader of the Rangers. Summon the Rangers from Italian. Very, very nice. Because the only... Um, sorry. The only hero in the game who was able to summon units was Aragorn with level 10. He was able... Or he is able to summon the army of the dead. One battalion, at least, you know? Okay, we have Blacksmith. Uh, Stormworker... Siege works, stable, tower, well, statue, we have archer range, barracks, blacksmiths, and, and also farm. So pretty normal stuff. Nothing too spicy, nothing too crazy. But that's fine. We need to get the brother of Faramir on the field, of course. And that's, of course, Boromir. And we will be careful with Boromir. Try to not lose him. Because he keeps dying in every single series or movies in, in which he's acting anyway. So, our goal here is to make him survive. Trust me on that one. And, once again, I want to skip the units for now. We will definitely need some units later on. But first of all, I would like to take a look into every single hero. And into the new changes, of course, of the existing heroes like Faramir, Boromir, Pippin and Gandalf. But also into the new heroes like the King of Death and also especially the Eagle. I'm interested in. Boromir looks like that. Um, he has the Horn of Gondor to stun the enemy units. He has the last stand. Boromir will continue fight, uh, to fight after his health is dis uh, deple depleted. That's very nice. It makes also a lot of sense. Leadership. Less leadership, by the way. He gives 60 normally. Uh, Captain of Gondor for the experience to the targeted allied units. And last but not least, the Captain of the White Tower. Summon soldiers from Osgiliath. Um, what is that? Fields if command points limit is reached. Okay, that actually counts to your command points. And your command points, as you can see and tell, is only 150. So you're quite limited. On the other side, your heroes like Gandalf doesn't cost any command points anymore. Which is a great change. Because normally Gandalf costs you 10 command points. We need to get those brothers side by side. This way they can share experience and level up way, way faster. There they are. And look at this, Boromir, what is that? That's King Theorin. King Theorin stands alone. Not alone, but this time there is no Boromir, there is no Gandalf to save you. Hitting like a truck, by the way, Boromir finishing him off. Level 5 already. And there is another Theorin, double, double trouble. Uh, okay, we have last 10, so we can make sure that Boromir is tanking everything. He's level 6, this guy's already level 10. We can also take a look into the leader of the rangers. Looks like that. You are able to summon one, two battalions of rangers. Paramir is also leadership that's an armor and damage mix, unlike in normal 1.06, in which it's only armor and fear resistant. No damage though. But also less uh, in compared to what he is normally giving to you in the normal game, which is the 1.06, of course. They are killing so much stuff with heroes exclusively. That's crazy. Let's take a look into this one. And we, we need also Gandalf to fight, of course, to make Gandalf uh, stronger. Very important. Let's use this. Palantir of the White. And now we are able to see the entire map, as you can see. We have we are against Double Rohan. And he was also able to get his outpost in the middle of the map. But that's fine. That's fine. That is a Hobbit. Why Faramir doesn't want to kill him? Okay, there we go. 
showing Mercy. Who's that? That's Elmia. The pictures are looking different. Boromir is pretty much the same, but Faramir is looking different. Okay, we have enough money now for Gandalf, guys. I know what you are thinking. You are like, okay, Shanks, you know what? Gandalf, you already know Gandalf. Why would you get him? Simple, guys. Simple. Gandalf is my favorite hero by far. That's what. That's why. That's why. Oh! They're permanent, dude. They're permanent. You are able to permanently summon units next to your side. And you can also give them levels. That's not like a, a short duration, like the normal summons from the spellbook, but the summons of the allied heroes are permanent. That's crazy. Like, combination of Boromir and Faramir, you are able to get Swordsman on the field and also Archers on the field, which is quite nice. There comes Gandalf the White. He's only level 1, but he can get mounted. He can get mounted. However, he has no leadership. Also, leadership is way, way weaker. Lightning Sword is going to be available with level 2. However, the Easter Light is available with level 1 already. So, he doesn't lose too much, actually. Especially, his mobility isn't taken away. That's very important. Um, and we have also now 6 power points collected. What is that? Summon army after that, okay? Last King of Gondo. Unlock Isil. Okay, you know what we need to do, right? It's simple. We need to get this thing here. So let's do this. We need uh, five more power points or two, three more power points now. Gandalf is already level two. That's great. Uh, water power, lightning sword, everything pretty much similar. We will lose this farm, but that's fine. Uh, stay. Okay. So we have four thousand now. We can get the eagle if I'm not mistaken, right? Now we can get the army of the dead leader. We need to close the gate, by the way, just in case they want to enter. This gambling is very, very fast and. In general, this mod, uh, this mod feels a bit faster than the normal 1.06. Needs to be level 9 to summon more units. They have Gandalf, you know? They have Gandalf. Oh, he's, uh, she's throwing stuff on us. Let's use um, heal. I mean, there we go. She's going down. And we are getting so, much power, so many power points. Now we have the last King of Gondor. Which summons, uh, unlocks Isildur. We can get Isildur now for 4,000 resources from our uh, Zita. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the leader of the Army of the Dead. Looks like that. Design-wise, it's not the high-end. Um, remember a couple of weeks or months ago even, we were taking a look into the Shadow and Flame mod. Another mod for BFME 1, you should be trying out definitely. And uh, Shadow and Flame is like a partner mod from Age of the Ring of BFME to the Rise of the Witch King. That's why the graphics were way more advanced. While uh, Palando, who is the creator of this mod, of course is doing it kinda alone and solo. And he was not investing too much time into the new designs and making everything look better. Because trust me on that one, making everything look better sounds of course great and amazing, but it will also make your game more laggy, especially in multiplayer games. It doesn't matter in single player games, but in multiplayer games it's horrible if you are if you are you know having too much lag. Okay, Isildur. And then last but not least the giant eagle. And then we can also take a look into I mean we can make a challenge to win only with heroes exclusively. Because I believe there are not many changes into the units, but we might we might take a look into them anyway. Let's um decide spontaneously, you know what I'm saying? You know what we could also potentially do? Build some statues to get the hero bonus, to get our heroes a bit cheaper on the field. But it's, that's kind of too late now. Because we are only missing a single hero. I'm actually quite excited about Isildur, who is a brand new hero alongside with the army of the dead leader. And the eagle. Talking about this guy, he has the blade of the damned. Uh, which is something like a, like a swordmaster from Aragorn. He will be dealing way more damage. He's going to be also quite tanky. Uh, with level 3, he has the... Irai presence, negative effect to nearby enemy troops. They're gonna lose. This is a debuff. We already know that debuff from BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King doesn't exist this way though in BFME 1. If also the Breath of the Dead, uh, it goes to the ground with the Breath of the Dead. Enemy takes minimal damage and are affected. They will be losing quite a lot of movement speed. Then we have the Totem of the Dead, summons a Totem of the Green Light. Left click and right click on the target. They're killing a lot, Aragorn, everything is dying to the 1-2 Ranger Battalion and the heroes we got. And last, last but not least, Undead Awakening, summon fellow Offbreakers. Just like Aragorn with level 10. Okay, but Aragorn of course is a hero from Rohan, same like in normal BFME 1. 
And so you have almost the money for the giant eagle. That's, ladies and gentlemen, is Isildur, you know. Every time Aragorn is saying, I am Isildur, yeah, that's the Isildur he's talking about. He has also the one ring, I think. Yeah, it feels like he has the one ring. Uh, become invisible. Then you have the leadership, which is great. Uh, armor, damage and combat experience combined, that's all you can ask for, really. Then you have the call of the king, summons the Monorian warriors. Uh, power of the Narsil, enormous damage bonus for a short time. Doesn't even tell you how much damage, it has to be crazy amount of damage. Then you have the Palantir of the Minas Anor, kill surrounding enemies. Oh, you know what I want to see, right? Hey, Boromir, please be careful a little bit. You don't need to take too much damage. Let's summon also his things. And uh, wait a bit more units. We can summon actually quite a lot now. And look at this. Two heroes and we have an army to fight with, guys. Just like that. That's quite nice. Okay, we have enough or more than enough money now for the giant eagle, who is going to be our last, last hero. Look our command points already. Without any production buildings in our base, we were able to summon quite a lot of units. Sauer guard, soldiers. They have even heavy armor purchase from Boromir. Okay, you can even combine them just like, um, you know, in normal BFME one. I mean, <laughs> I don't even need to do anything, you know, they are killing everything. And these heroes are sharing experience with each other, which is great. And you know what we can do now? Oh, wait a second. Let's build a trebuchet here, just for the defense. I would like to demolish one of the farms to build a marketplace. Because I want to see the bonuses you get if there are if there are any differences between the normal one and this mod. He's level four now. Let's use this. Oh, it's like a like a tainted land kind of thing. Oh, I always forget that you need to right click in BFM one, you know, because I'm so used. Oh, look at this animation. Not bad. Am I right? Not bad. Not bad at all. But let's group them all together. That's the eagle guys. He has the Screech with level 5, he, is, he has nothing special, I think he's pretty similar to a Felbeast or the Witch King from... I mean, Witch King is of course different because Witch King has the leadership, but he's like a he's like a Nazgul pretty much. We have 7 power points collected, uh, level 10 will of course unlock the army of the dead. We have also the Giant Eagle summon, uh, Rohan Allies summon. And uh, yeah, I mean, we can take a look into the beacon. I want to see how this is looking like, the beacon. Let's summon this right here. Oh, I can summon. Oh, I can summon here. I want to just see how it looks like. That's how it looks like. It's leadership bonus to nearby units. Uh, oh, 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 okay. So you can choose. That's, that's nice. Offensive bonus, 50% damage. Defensive for 25. And experience bonus. That's quite nice. It also acts like a tower. No, it doesn't act like a tower. It's a Gimli. I want to see the damage now. I want to demolish this tower. So it's going to be a fair 1v1 between the leader of the dead against the level. It's not fair fight though, but it's, it is how it is. You want to fight Gimli? You want to play rap? Say hello to my little AOD friend. I mean, we are also using the Blade of Damned, who is, which is doubling our damage pretty much. You can't. Gimli is quite slow. Level 6 and not just like that. Okay, so the eagle. Ooh! Eowyn screaming she is no man and uh, that's actually quite unfortunate. This guy is so expensive too, you know what I'm saying? That's very unfortunate, but it is how it is. How it is. So that's more. You get only 40 normally, that's 50. This is also way more. You get 20 normally, that's 40 now. It's, you know, Gondo is now way, be way better eco, I would say. You know what we can do? We can buy all the upgrades first. The prices are the same, 800, 1000 and 600. And then we're gonna take a look into the stable. Because I for myself, I like mobility units. You know, I, I wanna have units who are able to run around all the time, who are f mobile, fast. Did we lose another hero? No, no, we didn't, okay. Our heroes are fine. Stable, the same price, 800. Okay, level seven. But I wanna get this guy to level 10. I wanna see the Palantir of Minas Anor. Oh, Legolas. I see you, Legolas. Let's group all together. I want to I wanna put them inside the army. And Gandalf should also be close to him because Gandalf is also giving combat experience. The way combat experience works in this game is like very pretty easy, you know, to understand. The more combat experience you have, the more you can share it with your heroes. And the faster your heroes around your units are going to be able to level up as easy as that. We are, get, we are getting out range, but that's fine. That's fine, that's fine. 
There are many, many heroes. Level 7. This guy is already level 5. Level 10 Boromir, level 10 Faramir. <clears throat> they are making Denato proud. Gondos, Gondonites, uh, Night Shield. So pretty normal. Nothing too crazy, actually. I don't want to take a look into the unit we already know. Maybe there are some differences in the Archer range or Barracks. And then we have also enough power points now for the Army of the Dead. Oh, you can't go for the Army of the Dead after this one. You need to get this one. And let's get any, everything unlocked anyway. You know what I'm saying? We can just do it. Why not? We have enough power points for that. Hey, hey, hey. Don't die. You know what we could potentially do? I have an idea. Let's do this. We can get this mounted. And then we can just group all our heroes together and fight with the heroes exclusively. You know what I'm saying? So let's peel back. And then, because with the heroes, when we fight uh, side by side, we will be able to share experience with each other and level up way, way faster. You see? Level 8. We have also heal in the worst case scenario. Does he have heal? No, he has no heal, but he can always use the one ring to get invisible, you know? Don't split Boromir. Okay, Gandalf can do some shenanigans now if he wants to. Gandalf, just go for a Visa Plasium, please. Phew. Nice. Mary Poppins, you have no chance against the White Wizard. Our lands. Okay. So, also this is pretty similar, right? Yeah, this is also pretty similar. But you know what's very, very interesting? That you can upgrade now your buildings by paying money which was never existing in Behemoth 1 before. Normally, you have to build some sort of units, you know, set amount of units. Like, for example, in the archer range, it was four units. You need to build four arches. Before that, it's not possible to get the archer range to level two, which is necessary, of course, to get the fire, arrow upgrade purchase, and also to recruit some rangers. But now you can simply pay money, and that's gonna buy you so much. I mean, that's gonna be so nice in, in about time management. Because sometimes you are command points capped, you can't do that, you know? Okay, level eight. Let's use heal. Uh, he's taking quite a lot of damage. He isn't actually very tanky. He has only 2400 HP. Ganda, for example, has also 2400. But Gandalf is a squishy hero anyway. He is not like a melee hero. But compare this with Isildur, for example. He has almost double the health of the King of the Dead. I mean, of course, he's the King of Gondor. But it's still, you know. Okay. The damage output against the buildings is also very significant, I need to say. Now, after the buying, uh, after destroying this outpost, we can buy this outpost. Yeah, you can, we can also fight here, just why not? Um, now we are able to get fire. Rangers. Told you. I mean, the units are similar. Very similar. Actually, you have no different units than what you are normally you have in 1.06. Remember, this uh, mod is also including two new factions, Moria and Lothlorien. Uh, there are two videos about each faction, one video about each faction, of course, if you haven't seen them yet. They are on my channel, the latest videos. So, take a look if you want to. Uh, that, that's a, that we have a plan. I'm actually curious if we can do something, but I... I mean, we, what we can do is we can put one range... Oh, oh, you can't put arches inside the Titan anymore. But that's new, that's very unfortunate. I like that always, that you could put arches inside your outpost, you know? But it's it seems to not be possible. I mean, it can also be the fact that these units are from the summon, you know what I'm saying? But maybe we can put these units from the archer range? No, it's also not possible. So it's not a... you can't do that anymore. As easy as that, as simple as that. Okay, we have 9 power points collected. We can now choose the Eagle Allies. Okay, great. But what we can do potentially um, is to put them here inside this ruined tower. That's possible. Hey, 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 what a nice guy. <laughs> he was creeping the trolley but not touching the money. I, I take it. I'm happy. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, the question is do we have anything to break the gate? I, I don't think so, right? I don't think so. That is, there are no more towers. So we need to take a look into this, get a farm here. We are getting so much money, so much value. And you know what time it is? It is time to build the legendary Stormworker, the best defensive building in the entire game. Okay. 
Oh, he's closing the gate, of course. Can we attack the gate with something? Maybe with the guy? No. Maybe Luke can do something. Also nothing. Uh, what is that? Oh, we have... A, he needs He needs to be only level 8 for this one. I didn't know that. That's great. You know what time it is. We need to take a look into Isildur and his devastating power. The Palantir of Minas Anor. Let's take a look into that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no, no, no. That's the wrong building. I don't want to build the workshop. I want to build the stone worker. Come on. That's the building I want to build. Okay. That's the king of Gondor, Isildur. And he's all about to pop off. Okay. So, yeah, he needs to be level 10, though, for the Undead Awakening. Okay. So, I want I want to I don't want to use it on two peasants, though. Maybe I might have to because there are not many units besides that. Watch your back. Oh, rank 10 already. That's crazy. You get inside here? Okay. Okay, it's time. It's time. You don't want to use it? Oh! It's pretty similar to the Water of Power. The animation is, of course, different. I think he's, like, smashing the ground with his sword. That's how he's doing it. Trust me, this is going to be uh, impossible to be taken down for the opponent. Trust me. Okay. So, almost up. We are getting chased down, but it's fine. Um, I'm actually curious if we can, wait a second. Cloud break stuns enemy units. Similar. Giant eagles. Can we attack with the eagles to gate? Of course not. Yeah, they are also taking so much damage. And it, you see, the eagles are dealing little to zero damage to the towers. So, long story short, we won't be able to do anything without breaking the gate. And for that reason, we have to get some siege weapons. But you can see our command points yourself, am I right? They are command points capped pretty much. We are not able to recruit any more units, almost. That's why we need to sacrifice now a couple of units. But that's fine. Okay? So... This is the opponent we need to defeat. We can also use this, uh, see it. The Palantir once again to see everything. Oh, that's a big army here. Can we summon? Let's summon the Rohan allies. No? This map is so full with uh, textures and stones and stuff like that. It's very hard to summon stuff on this map. It was also the problem last time, but I, I think it's a nice map for a 1v2 situation. Of course, we can also play 1v3, 1v4. Oh, that's a lot of Rohirrim, actually. You know what would be nice? If we can also potentially summon some Rohirrim archers, you know? It would be amazing. I'm surprised that these guys are not getting any... Uh, say it. That these guys are not getting any um, ends on the field just yet. Hard army, yeah? It's hard army. Okay. So, siege works. And also the same thing here. You don't need to get four trebuchets on the field first before you can purchase the uh, Firestone. You can just invest a bit of money. 1,200. It's a lot of money, actually. But if you are snowballing, if you have a massive fleet, this is going to be helpful to snowball even harder. Don't close the gate, please. Oh, Gandalf has like a knockback. Do you see that? And Gandalf has like a knockback. We can just use the Cloud Break to stun everything. Let's oh, he is using the Bleed Master. But it's like, uh, you are getting outnumbered, my friend. You have no chance. Level 9, that's great. We have no sustain, though, in our uh, kit. We have no heal beside the heal from the summoner, uh, from the spare book. El uh, Eomir, come on, please. Okay, let's peel back. That's gonna end uh, not very nice for us, trust me on that one. Okay, we can use heal, fight here. I'm worried that he will be closing the gate, you know? Because if he's closing the gate, we can't get out anymore. Okay, let's peel back. We have now a Siege Works level 2. We can uh, just get some trebuchets and start sieging now. Oh, Gimli is level 4 now. Okay, I see you, Gimli. Oh, we have 13 power points collected. We are absolutely fine. Okay, we can also summon the Rangers now. I want to see that. That should not be permanent, if I'm not mistaken. Let's try. And once again, it's like not about the PowerPoint or something, it's about the map. On this map, you are not able to summon 
very easily. You see, it's always red because uh, it's very annoying. This guy is jumping on the gate, by the way. <laughs> so far. No way. Okay, come on, please. There we go. Finally, dude. Now you are. They are not permanent. Makes much more sense for Gondo to summon the Rangers than to summon um, elves, you know? Because elves was a Rohan thing, just like in Helm's Deep. Like, for example, Gondo summons eagles, Rohan summon, summons ants, it makes sense. Gondo summons Rohan allies makes also sense, but Gondo summoning elves doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, these guys, these guys are actually hurting quite a lot. We are not able to attack. Do you see this? This thing is blocking. Okay. Anyways, let's lead forward. We are wasting too much time, and then we can start sieging already. Borome should be fine. Yeah, yeah, he's fine. We can always summon reinforcements if we need to. There's many, many heroes here. Uh, I'm very tempted to get my heroes to this side to get a couple of them to level ten. This guy. And also Gandalf level 10. This guy already unlocked everything. He doesn't need to be level 10. Power of... I don't know. I want to see this. Like... I don't know. Call the king. Yeah, let's let's summon this one. And those are special units. You are not able... They have also all the upgrades, by the way. They are looking different. Oh, that's like a soldier battalion. Never mind. Okay. Okay, fight. Uh, trebuchets, please siege. Break this one first. We can also get some more trebuchets on the field. It's level 3 already. That's great. This way we can get the units on the field a bit faster. Oh, oh. Not very good. It will be killing our trebuchets though, unfortunately. Fight. Gandalf, you can just right click. E click is going to unlock the auto attack move. That means, for example, if you click all your heroes at the same time and you press A on your keyboard and right click on a spot, it means until this spot they're gonna automatically attack everything on their way, okay? Okay? I mean, we can kill, I can kill you, no problem. Only Rohirrim archers, they are not the best against Katas. Melee units are the best, for example these units, they're gonna kill our Katas now in no time. Oh, it was a mistake to not protect them. Wait a second, so, ah, uh, I mean, it's too late. We won't be able to get through, but we have more catapults coming, cooking, that's nice. We have so much money, we can do whatever we want, pretty much, right? Okay, Gimli, or Aragon is doing his thing, slowly but surely, that's his picture. Gimli, or Legolas is looking like that. So, of course, we will also take a look into the Rohan faction, that was not happening just yet. We only took a look into Lothlorien and Moria so far. But uh, Isengard, Mordor, and Rohan are gonna be also, of course, seen. That's why I don't like to right click, because it's not very smart, you know? The way they are using it, it's not very... Do you see this one Archer Battalion inside the tower? Holy moly, they are doing such a great job. Okay, where are trebuchets? Did we lose them too? No, never mind, never mind. Okay, we have, we have actually so many of them now. The build speed is also crazy. Like, once again, I, I believe, like, every unit is uh, moving a bit faster. Use it, Gandalf. Nice. Okay, the trebuchets are coming, ladies and gentlemen. And the siege will begin. The hour of ends and uh, Rohan walls. When the age of Gondor is crashing down, but it is not this day. This day we break the wall and enter the beams. By all that you all dear in this good game, I bid you subscribe and leave a like. Would be amazing, guys. I would be happy. Okay, let's summon some stuff just to face tank. But once again, it's annoying me that it's so hard to summon here, right? Okay, there we go. So now we can just send the summoned units inside the jeans. They are not supposed to deal damage or something, but they are more about to tank damage, you know? Talking about tanking damage, our Gandalf is just tanking damage for no reason. Okay, please don't attack our own units. Attack the towers instead. Let's group all. Kill the Tita first, this way he can't replace his buildings anymore. We need to use heal here. Let's use heal to keep our heroes highly leveled. Or he, uh, high HP, not level of course. We lost the side, but that's fine. 
We need to get command points anyway. Okay, now we are inside the bees. Uh, oh, look, look. He can use it again. Do you see that? He's level 10 now. I like the animation. Look, you see that? It's like he's putting a stone on the ground. He's like, you see his sword? He's leaving his sword alone and then he's doing something. I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing definitely something. Look, Faramir is like trying to show his quality once again, but it's too much. It's too much for Faramir, the captain of Gonzo. I, I want to see this, the last turn. Boromir. The towers are hurting, actually. The towers are hurting, but it's fine. We need to revive, of course, Faramir. That's... We, we owe him to revive him, you know? Look the tower with the lasers from the Stoneworker hitting like a truck. There we go. Nice. This Rohan, ladies and gentlemen, has been defeated. You know, it's only one left now. This way we can buy this castle for us. If we have then two castles and one, one outpost. I mean, money, as you can see and tell, isn't really a problem. And all we need to do is break the gate and get inside the jeans and finish off. Also, what is this? The animation is still on the ground. When you have a situation like that, it's always better to build farms. Why? Because not only they are cheaper than blacksmiths, but also you get 50% extra resources from the Grand Harvest, while Iron Ore is giving you 40. I mean, it's even much, much better in this mod, but in the normal 1.06 patch, it gives you only 20%, uh, while the Black, uh, gr you know, Grand Harvest gives you 40, so double the amount. That's why farms are always better, especially if you have already 6 blacksmiths to get the maximum value of the steel bonus to make your upgrades and your now, the Firestone on your Siege Wars, for example, cheaper. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not patient enough to wait for the trebuchets now. We can get some more on the field, just... Oh, we need to kill Gimli, though. He's gonna hurt us. I would like to wait. Okay, the Eagle is back in the business. I mean, I was not taking a look into the Eagle too much. Why she can use the smite multiple times? I don't get it. Maybe because we killed Gimli. Remember, when a hero dies close to Eowyn, Eowyn's spear ability, smite ability, will be resetted. And she will get the chance to use it over and over again. The more heroes are dying next to her, the more she will be able to use it. So, the plan is simple now, okay? I will show you what you can do in a situation like that. Remember, we have unlocked the army of the dead for a long time now, but we have not used it just yet, because it was not necessary. We're gonna summon the army of the dead, send them inside the gene to make them tank the damage, okay? That's the plan number A. Number one. And the plan number two is to summon eagles after the AOD is tanking everything to, to destroy the citadel. And then we can just focus down the buildings. Unfortunately for us... Oh, he's level 10 actually. Okay. Now he can summon more army of the dead. Oh, look at the army of the dead with the leader. Imagine him giving leadership, you know what I'm saying? It would be also crazy. <laughs> Okay, I want to see this. Uh, oh, what is this, dude? That's crazy. That actually burst. Holy guacamole, that burst, ladies and gentlemen. That burst. We have heal in the worst case. That, you know, we can also use heal. Uh, only hero who was not getting to level 10, unfortunately, but it's, it's how it is, Gandalf. But we have seen <clears throat> what a power from this guy. And again, it's up. You see what he's doing? Wait a second, I want to see this. He's dropping the sword. He has like a stone on the field in his hands. He's smashing it on the ground and then victory is just like that. Uh, GG well played, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Likes are helping quite a lot. And again, if you missed me at the beginning of the stream, I was showing my face at the bottom right side. Uh, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. If you haven't done it yet, make also please sure to follow me on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. I will be on a summer break uh, from the end of July until end of August. And then starting in September, we will have the uh, World Championship 2021 for BFME 2, the Rise of the Witch King. Many, many streams, many, many commentaries, many, many great tournament games are waiting for you. Every single one of these is going to be live streamed on my Twitch channel. And I would like and love to meet you also in there, guys. Thanks for watching. i see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards and keep hitting like a truck.